Hello VR gamers and Metro lovers, here's a few ways you can increase your success and enjoyment of Metro Awakening, aka Metro VR, aka finally another quality virtual reality shooter that isn't another sandbox or procedurally generated roguelike. Alright, tip number one is probably the most vital in the entire game, and that's to make sure you pick which AK you use wisely. Take the most tricked out version you can find. There'll be plenty to pick from once you start fighting human enemies. Just put your current Kalash in your left hand, pick up the new one that you want into your right hand, and store it over your right shoulder, easy as pie. I personally recommend the stockless version for extra aiming mobility in the cramped metro tunnels. And yeah, they're functionally all identical, but when you're playing the only metro Metro game with no weapon or equipment customization whatsoever, you've got to get that little bit of serotonin somewhere. So tip number two is probably going to be a little bit controversial, but make sure you take advantage of stealth and knock enemies out by just punching them on the back of the head or thwacking them with a weapon. I could say this is to save ammo, but it's really because the ragdoll deaths of the human enemies are kind of hilarious, especially after you just Looney Tunes style bonk them on the back of the head and they fall down after a single punch. I guess this was easier for the developers to make than say like a knife that stabs people, but I guess saints and sinners already did that, so why bother doing it again? Tip number three is to make sure you take the mags out of your fallen enemy's weapons for the ammo. Resource management is like 70% of success in any Metro game, and Metro Awakening is not an exception to that. Though, don't expect your enemies to have ammo that you can loot on their bodies, like in literally any other Metro title. I guess having an amazing, immersive, one-of-a-kind looting system where you're using your real hands to take supplies off of your dead opponents would just be too immersive and amazing, so the developers decided to just not do it so that none of us would get hurt from our minds being blown. Probably Probably this is the same reason why they decided not to do weapon upgrades or throwing knives and the arsenal is like one fifth the size of that found in any other Metro title. Uh, let's see, tip number four, uh, turn the brightness up. It's really dark, like super dark in the Metro tunnels in the post-apocalypse. You do get a headlamp that gets recharged with a little recharging device, a lot like the one that Archeom has, except you turn a crank but it's insanely cool. I actually think this part of the game is really awesome, but it'll still be generally easier for you to see if you turn the brightness up, especially if you don't want to squint and uh, squinting's bad for your eyes. So you probably want to turn it up. It's pretty dark. Don't worry about ruining your immersion though, because in tip number five, I'm addressing that this game can still be scary as all hell. You might've heard of or seen the arachnophobia warning when starting it up. There are some jump scares that actually really land and some sections that do a great job in classic Metro fashion of really building up the dread and anticipation before you get to another area. So basically don't have arachnophobia if you play this game, except for like one or two times. Uh, honestly, the spiders don't really come up all that much much, but uh, they are really scary when they do. Oh yeah, and make sure not to accidentally run into a wall or something. Like don't freak out and run across the room physically. You'll be fine if you don't do that. You'll be, you'll be fine. The sixth tip is actually the most important tip of all, but I saved it for later to reward you for watching this far into the video. I was lying during the first tip. This is the most important one. Uh, play the game in seated mode during the first chapter. The prologue starts out seeming really promising and has some action, but the pacing just gets absolutely murdered. And chapter one is all like turning wheels and listening to people talk for just way too long. The pacing, it just takes a, a big nosedive. So take a seat and just kind of watch your way through the first chapter. When you hit chapter two, uh, the game gets much more interesting very quickly, and then you can start playing in standing mode if you play in standing mode again. But uh, yeah, chapter one is a real, uh, it's a sit down. You're basically watching a movie. And for some reason, they thought that third person cutscenes are like a good idea in a VR game. Still don't understand that decision, but uh, yeah, it picks up in chapter two. Tip number seven is about just as essential. If you really want to make everything feel more immersive and apocalyptic, then wear your gas mask even when you don't have to. It really just multiplies the Metro vibes and uh, your filters for your gas mask don't actually get used up if you aren't in a radioactive zone. So you can wear your gas mask for as long as you want to. And hear that like that Darth Vader breathing like, you know, that breathing noise, which just sounds really cool. And yeah, you know, you have to look through the visor and wipe it from time to time. Very apocalypse vibes, very fun stuff. Oh yeah, and for tip number eight, 
uh, make sure you stand in the middle of your play space when you start one of the metro cart sections. Since these sections are clearly the least functional pieces of the entire game, you'll be rooted into the spot that you're standing in after you turn the, the igniter, the starter. So if you start the cart section while physically standing like right in front of a wall or something, or with a wall to your back, you'll be annoyed when you hit a boundary just by placing your hands on like maybe machine gun attached to the cart or trying to, you know, reach your hands out to the edges of the cart. So make sure to center yourself before flipping that on switch. Make sure you've got plenty of room on you on all sides for some stationary shooting. Otherwise, you'll just have to deal with it until the cart stops and it's really annoying. Oh, and for tip number nine, make sure to forget what I said in tip number three about hoarding ammo when it comes to the pistol specifically. For some reason, the designers thought it would be funny to only let you hold like 28 pistol rounds in reserve. So you'll find yourself often either having no ammo for the pistol after briefly remembering it exists and using it or way more ammo than you can carry. It takes a whole mag to take down basically anything with the Tokarev and that's if you hit your shots. So the pistol is an easy weapon to just kind of forget about after you get the Kalash. I found myself using the AK almost all of the time anyway. The Helsing takes forever to reload if you miss and the shambler doesn't show up until like six hours into the game which is way too late for such a cool weapon i really wish it showed up earlier it's so it's so amazing it's the most unique weapon in the entire game it's awesome for the 10th and final tip i'd say make sure you don't compare this game to half-life alex half-life alex still won't come to the quest no matter how many letters i send to valve and metro awakening is not about to unseat alex as the number one single player shooter adventure to ever come out on virtual reality headsets now if you think you're better at giving tips for Metro Awakening than I am, then prove it in the comments by outdoing my tips and tricks with your own. This all being said though, Metro Awakening is about as good of a VR Metro game as we could have asked for given the current state of the virtual reality games industry, and I've been absolutely binging it whenever possible. Where the gameplay sometimes fails, the immersion into the Metro world and the story of Khan kept me coming back over and over and over and over.